Hello, my name is Nani Moss. I am a second year FPMRS fellow at the University of Chicago North Shore. On behalf of my colleagues, I will be presenting a prospective randomized trial comparing intravesical dimethyl sulfoxide to bupivacaine triamcinolone and heparin for newly diagnosed interstitial cystitis bladder pain syndrome. My co-authors and I have no relevant financial disclosures. I see as a debilitating condition. Intravesical installation with DMSO is one of two FDA-approved treatments for IC. However, several other bladder installation regimens have been described. At our institution, we have found success with the use of bupivacaine, triamcinolone, and heparin. While this regimen itself has not been formally studied, the intravesical application of each component has been described in the literature. Our primary objective was to investigate if bladder installations using DMSO or BTH would result in a greater than 29.5% change in ICSI score in women with newly diagnosed IC. Additional objectives included changes in overactive bladder and pain symptoms, as well as change in bladder capacity. This was a prospective randomized study performed at a female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery center. All study procedures were approved by the North Shore University Health System Institutional Review Board. Study participants were randomized to receive six weekly bladder installations of either DMSO or BTH. Patients with newly diagnosed IC who chose to undergo treatment with bladder installations were eligible. Exclusion criteria included conditions and therapies that may reduce bladder capacity. At each visit, study participants completed the ICSI. Bladder capacity was determined, and the bladder was then instilled with either DMSO or BTH. We performed a power calculation, which determined that we required 49 subjects per group to detect a 25% difference in response to installations with an 80% power. Between October 2011 and April 2019, 83 patients with newly diagnosed IC who chose treatment with bladder installations were enrolled and randomized. 70 participants completed the six weekly installations. The two groups were generally similar in baseline demographics, clinical data, and baseline scores on questionnaires. The only difference between the two groups was baseline mean systemetric maximum capacity. For our primary outcome, a greater than 29.5% reduction in total ICSI score was seen at the sixth visit in 63% of DMSO patients and in 43% of the BTH patients. This was a non-significant outcome as we were expecting a 25% difference between the groups, but only found a 21% difference. At each treatment visit, ICSI scores decreased in both groups. However, there was a statistically significant difference in the change of total ICSI score for patients in the DMSO treatment group at visits five and six when compared to treatment with BTH. Here, we are looking at the four individual questions of the ICSI. The DMSO treatment group had statistically significant improvement in all symptoms explored in the questionnaire. Those treated with BTH only reported improvement in symptoms of urinary urgency and frequency. In comparing the two groups, those receiving DMSO reported a statistically significant improvement in pain. This emerged at visit five, and it remained significant at visit six. Bladder capacity increased from baseline for both treatment groups with an increase of 97 milliliters in the DMSO group and 67 milliliters with BTH treatment. In conclusion, treatment of newly diagnosed IC with DMSO or BTH resulted in overall symptomatic relief, significant improvement in symptoms of urinary urgency and frequency as measured by the ICSI, and an increase in bladder capacity. However, treatment with DMSO provided greater improvement in symptoms, as 63% of participants achieved a 29.5% reduction in total ICSI score. There was significant improvement in symptoms of nocturia and pain, and this improvement in pain was significant when compared to the BTH group at visits five and six. Our study is the first to apply a prospective randomized study design to compare DMSO bladder installations against a therapy regimen that has historically been recommended based on antidote. There are limitations to this study. A placebo-controlled trial was not performed, as we felt patients should receive treatment for their painful symptoms rather than placebo. A double-blinded trial was not feasible due to the characteristic strong odor of DMSO. We did not meet our predetermined sample size. Participation in a randomized study may not appeal to this patient population as it removes choice in treatment and a sense of control. Future studies with larger study populations are needed to further investigate the relationship between symptomatic treatment and increased bladder capacity, timing of bladder installations, and long-term treatment plans with patients with IC who desire treatment with intervesical installation. Here are my references. Thank you, and I would be happy to answer any questions.